And we're just going to simply ask God, whatever he wants to speak to us, whatever he wants done, let that he would do exactly that. So in Jesus' name, right now, I take dominion and authority over every spirit that is contrary to you, everything that would hinder what you desire to do in this church. God, I pray that you would give us eyes to see. I pray that you would give us a heart to understand. God, I pray that you would release your angels to minister to your body. God, I pray that your spirit would make itself known. God, I pray that you would speak a clear word to us. And God, whatever you desire to do in our midst, God, we say yes to you. God, we give our minds to you, our hearts to you. And God, we desire to see your will done. God, not only in us, but God, in this region as it is in heaven. And so, God, we lose your authority. God, we lose your will. God, in your purpose to be established in this place. God, we worship you and we thank you for it, God. In Jesus' name, thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Before you are seated, I have one passage of scripture that I want to read to you guys. I think that's my only one. Um, It's Matthew chapter 11, verse 12. It's a very common passage of scripture. But it says, and from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of, of heaven suffereth violence. And the violent take it by force. Amen. You may be seated. Um, If I were to have a title for this message, I'm actually going to come down here. I don't get to do that. (laughs) I love it. It's nothing like being home. But um, I have, I have have a title. Yes, it's called Tug of War. Um, Somebody was talking to me the other night and they said this to me. And I was like, it changed the complete direction I was going in tonight. And I believe um, the Lord just wants to speak to us something. I need two volunteers. Oh, man. Wow. Praise the Lord. Okay. (laughs) Let's see. Man, I shouldn't have asked that, Pastor. I don't know who to choose. (laughs) All right. We're going to have, we're going to have Mike Bishop and we're going to have Destiny. (laughs) All right. So for, (laughs) I don't know if this was the right analogy, but we're going to try to stay in the spirit, guys. (laughs) We're going to try to stay in the spirit. So the title of the message that I have tonight is a common game that a lot of people know of. It's called tug of war. Um, I didn't have a rope, so I borrowed a jump rope from my brother. It'll work. (laughs) And so for those of you guys that do not know what tug of war is, it's pretty much, thank you. It's pretty much that uh, I try to look up the origin of this game. Um, A lot of people, they don't really know where it quite started, but it's been around for a very long time. And it's when two opponents would take pretty much a side of the rope and then the stronger side, it sometimes would be individual or sometimes it would be teams. They actually tell you don't do that. You don't wrap it around, but, but you can't wrap it around your body. But pretty much the team would come or individuals would pull this rope and you guys don't have to do it quite yet. <laughs> you guys are ready. But, and the reason I was kind of intentional on, yeah, but. Um, Two sides, two opponents would pretty much pull at the rope and pretty much the strongest group would win. And how they they would know that they would win is that the other side would usually give in and lose strength. And then the other opponent would then pull that other person to the other side. Does that make sense? And so as I was praying about tonight and what God wanted me to speak, there's been things prophesied. And Brother Morgan was in the Holy Ghost last week. If you guys didn't hear it. You need to hear it. In other markets, just everybody has been talking about the land and just tipping over and going to these new places that God has prepared for us. There's been things that have been prophesied to us. New ground being taken, high schools, college campuses, cities being given over to us. And I believe that. And a lot of us shouted and rejoiced and thanked God and said, it is ours. It belongs to us. It's happening now. But as God began to deal with me about what my role is in this, I just came to remind you that there is a constant tug of war that's going to happen between you and the adversary. And so there's a constant pull. And usually when you would play this game, the biggest thing that you would do is each party had to lean outward. And I'm not going to do this. The reason why I told her, I don't know what, Destiny, she's strong and she's pregnant. So I thought she would be the weaker one, but she's like ready and aggressive. And I was like, man, I should have got someone else. But usually I'm going to have, I'm going to allow Destiny to be the church. 
All right? And I'm going to allow Mike just naturally, because he is stronger physically, to be the adversary. <laughs> and so naturally, whether we realize it or not, there is a constant tug of war. There is a constant pull from the adversary that's saying, will you let go? Will you compromise more? The same way that we're believing God to give us greater territory in our personal lives, victory over things, for us to see our family saved, for us to see neighborhoods, all these things come to God. The enemy is not sitting passively. The Bible first that we just read says that the violent, the, the kingdom suffereth violence and the violent take it by force. Mean the kingdom that you're a part of, whether you realize it or not, is not a passive kingdom. The enemy will do whatever he can. The Bible says he goes about as a roaring lion seeking whom, whom he may dev devour. And if I come about it passively, I will not realize it. But all of a sudden I become a slave to something that I was meant to have a dominion over. Does that make sense? And sometimes if we're not careful, we can look at the situation and feel like I'm not strong enough to be able to overcome my adversary because he seems bigger than me. He seems stronger than me. And it's very easy for us to shout and praise when the, when leadership, whatever, when you read in your Bible that says greater is he that's in me than he, that he's in the world. But then I don't understand when I go home that I'm still a slave, that for some reason he keeps gaining territory and something that God reminded me of the only way that you will be able to continue to see victory and see that ground continues to be taken and that you continue to have more ground is if you don't compromise it is very easy it is and this is so important that we remain obedient and submitted it's so important that whatever God is asking you to do, that you say yes to him. It is not the will of God that you shout here about just gaining ground and yet you're still dealing with alcoholism at home. It is not the will of God that you shout here about a high school coming to God and you're still bound to nicotine at home. It is God's will when you come into this kingdom that he is able to deliver you of everything that you are fighting. And again, God is going to give us those territories. God is going to give us our families. But whatever he's asking you, you must say yes to him. The answer of how do I gain strength? How do I gain ground? How do I cause the adversary to lose ground is if I don't compromise. Holiness is still important. And sometimes, and, and I say that, and we can, and sometimes we can narrow that down to just the way that we dress, which is still important, and just the way that we talk, which is still very important, but it encompasses every aspect of our life. You guys may be seated. Thank you. When the, thank you. When the nation of Israel, you find that the times when they would struggle the most was when they would compromise. Their strength had nothing to do with their numbers. Their strength and their victory had nothing to do with the people that they possessed, who was on their side. Their strength had everything to do to the God that they obeyed and submitted to. So the things that we see in the land and the things that God is going to do in our midst is not going to have anything to do with the talent that we have. It's not going to have anything to do with the people that are on in this church, but it's going to have everything to do if we remain submitted and obedient to the voice of God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Man, there's a special anointing when you're down there. My God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And I just strongly felt, I just strong, and it's just so easy just to kind of, there are so many other things that I've been kind of studying and I'm so excited just to talk to you guys about tonight. And I just couldn't get away from this. God's going to do it. God's going to do it. We shouted about that and he's willing to do, but God does not compromise. God is not willing to, you, I wasn't in numbers. And I won't go there, but you find that the enemy was fearful of the nation of Israel. And you find that he calls for Balaam and tells him to begin to prophesy against the nation of Israel. And he, this, this man of God says, I cannot curse what God has blessed. But you find that the way that they felt captive is that they began to compromise. The enemy could not do anything to them. But as soon as they began to, to give up ground... As soon as they began to compromise, then all of a sudden, everything that was meant to be in their possession 
they lost it. Everything that they were meant to have dominion over, they became subject to. And it's God's will for us to possess everything that he has for us. But it's not his will that we win our high school, but then we end up lost when we graduate. It's not the will of God that our kids are involved in Sunday school. But when they grow up, they, they, they ask, what happened to you? Because you were never praying when you told them to pray. And so there must be something in us, an aggressiveness, a hunger and an aggressiveness to realize that every ounce of territory that I have, that I have fought for, not only am I not going to give it up, I am going to, going to take more, but I'm always going to, I'm also going to keep it. Does that make sense? In Jesus name. And so, and, and this may not apply to everyone here. There's some of you guys that may be doing wonderful, but it will apply to you at some point. There are moments and seasons in my life that it's not until, honestly, I get around somebody else who's just on fire doing just, you know, I get around people that challenge me and the, and, or sometimes just in the prayer room and the Lord will just begin to shine light. And I realize I have been giving up ground in an area and I didn't even realize it was for, it was, it was up for battle. I was compromising in an area and I didn't even know that the enemy was trying to gain more ground. And sometimes we can catch ourselves there mentally, emotionally. The things that we, we do is just a Netflix film. It's just, it's just, I'm just hanging out with this friend, even though my pastor and everybody else has told me you need to cut that relationship off. You know, and sometimes we can look at that tug of war and realize like I'm still hanging on. I'm still here. I still haven't fully gave in, but you lost ground. And the thing is, your your adversary has been doing this for quite a while. He's a little patient and he will hold out and it's allowed you to think it's just a little bit of ground and you will find yourself in a place that you never thought that you would be. Sometimes we find ourselves in predicaments and we ask God why. We're frustrated. We're like, how did I even get here? What is going on? And and if we're not careful, we can start to blame the enemy. But if we would just take some time and reassess what we've engaged in, we didn't realize that the past six months I've been giving ground to the adversary. The past six months I've been compromising. The past six months I've been letting things in my spirit that nobody else has known about. I've been engaging in a relationship that I know that I should not be involved in. I've been engaging in a friendship that I should not be involved in. God still does care about those things. When he purchased you, he purchased all of you. And it's because there is a purpose. There's something that he wants to use you for. And everything that we've been preaching and talking about, we have been breaking the barrier that this is for a select few. God wants to use this entire church to bring us to the place that God wants us to go in. So therefore, what you do matters. Again, there's times that those... That tug of war, it was done individually. And there's going to be tug of wars that you, you've already engaged in. You guys know what I'm talking about. That you've engaged in privately that no one else talks about. That God is asking you something that just doesn't make sense. Like, God, why do I have to give this up? Why do I have to do this? That other person doesn't have to do it. But he's trying to pro- cause you to be proactive. And letting you know that the enemy is after, for, after some ground. And I don't want you to let it up. And then there's other times as well. That we're collectively in a tug of war. It is not, it is not the will of God that we ever come together and we throw away a service. It is not the will of God that we ever come together and nothing happens. There are times, there are times you are more sensitive than you realize. You can come in and you're just like, "Mm, I don't know what's going on, but this is, this is not it. I just, man, it's just, I don't know if it's the musicians. I don't know, pastor, what's going on? You're going to have to fix this. I don't know what's going on. And sometimes it's because there's some resistance happening in the service. We're in a tug of war. The enemy's like, are you going to throw away this service? Let me see how much I can push and see if you'll give up. Let me see what I can do to get you distracted and say, it's okay. Well, we had a good service last Sunday. It's okay if this one's not so, so we'll pick it back up next week. He's after ground. And there is no, there is not enough time for us to be able to take this casually. Jesus is coming and we need our hands on deck. We need everybody involved. And in those moments when the body is involved, we need as much hands on that rope as it were pulling and saying, we are not giving up ground. We went a little further last week, but I want more this Sunday. I know that we hit the throne when we, we touched, we went places that I didn't think we could go. But I want to go further in you. Does that make sense? And Brother Nick was in the Holy Ghost as he talked about 
going deeper. Sorry, I need a drink of water. Let's lift our hands and just thank the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And that's pretty much the main thing that God wanted me to remind the land of tonight. There are these places, the things, the thing I have learned in my just really short, just these past 11 years, it's short and long at the same time, um, that the things that God has spoken in Habakkuk, I can't remember the passage, I believe it's in Habakkuk chapter 2 that talks about this vision of the Lord. When God gives us a promise that he is willing and faithful to do it, and he's going to do it, but sometimes the most frustrating part whenever we have a promise and things that we have been waiting on is the process in between. It's a journey in between. And there's sometimes that you're like, man, God, I know that you told me this, but you didn't tell me about this. You didn't tell me about the hell that was going to break. You know, you didn't tell me about all the things that was going to go wrong. You didn't tell me about whatever it might be. But remember, for him, that's not the main goal. The thing is like, I, just the, 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 the disciples, when they were in the boat, Jesus made the statement, you find that, he says, he lets them know that they're going to go on the other side, but he didn't tell them about the storm that was going to take place on their journey to the other side. And you find that his response was like, oh, I didn't know that there was going to be a storm. He just says, oh, you have little faith. Because he said that they would make it to the other side. So it doesn't matter what comes during the process to the other side. He said, we're going to the other side. But then in this journey, I have to be careful because he won't compromise that I don't give up ground. If they decided to jump ship, if they decided to get off of that boat, they would not have made it because they forsook the manner in which that he told them that they would get there. And so the same way God is take, it's a, it was already said, we're here. We're in that moment. Do not allow the enemy to cause you to give up ground. Whatever, and if you have already begun to compromise and let go of things and kind of had the language and speak, it's just not that big of a deal. I just don't see why they just won't leave it alone. It's, it's not that big of a deal. Stop talking to me about that. Be careful. Be careful if you've already started giving up ground. And begin to, re you need to repent and allow the Lord to help you to regain that ground and allow there to be an aggressiveness that gets in your spirit and says that, God, all that you have for me, that's what I want. And then there's sometimes, too, I can get to the place and just saying, God, you've done enough. Like, you know, you've, you've, you've fulfilled part of the promise. There were times with the nation of Israel, they drove out majority of their enemies. They drove, they drove out, you know, the ones that they told them to, but there was just some, it was just a little hard. It took more energy. It took more effort. But obey God fully. Because what seems like a small deal right now may be what destroys a generation after you. We cannot afford to give up ground, but we must allow the Lord to baptize us with an aggression for the things of the spirit, with aggression for the things of God, to say that I'm not compromising. I don't care what the world is doing. But as for me in my house, as for me in this temple, I'm going to obey. If it's in this book, it's not outdated. It is not old fashioned, but I'm going to submit. There is something and this world is demonstrating that there are some things that the church used to preach all the time. And the world was also doing it. There was a clear distinction between man and woman back in the day that it didn't really to me. I don't know how they preached it, but I know they did preach it, preach it. And now you find now that how relevant it was to preach such a separation. And sometimes we don't realize the things that we're fighting for and why we're so aggressive about it. But the enemy that you're fighting is even more aggressive than you realize. And there must be something that gets a hold in our spirit that it doesn't matter what the world is preaching, teaching, and doing. But I want everything that God has for me. You can all stand in Jesus' name. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Again, this is very short and kind of simple but very powerful. Sometimes we can look at people and just say, man, I just want to be with like them. Why do they not struggle? And you find that usually those same people are very protective of a, over what they have. They've created boundaries. There's something to be said about someone when they get along with God. Hey, I'm praying. This is not going to be interrupted. 
Hey, this is the time that which our family prays. It doesn't matter what your friends are doing. And you find that there's a level of aggression that as for me in my house, again, we can quote that, but there's something when it gets into my spirit. And if this house is serving the Lord, there is just certain things that can't come into this house. There are certain wardrobes that can't, there's just certain things that we do not do because there's something that I am protecting. There is ground that I've gained and you don't know the price that I paid to gain this ground. And I'm just not going to give it for mere satisfaction in Jesus name praise the Lord. And so I just, I'm just going to have us come up here and we're just going to pray. We're just going to ask the Lord to search us and allow us to give us the grace and the wisdom to show if there's been any area in which that we've allowed the enemy to gain ground, which we've allowed our flesh to gain ground. Sometimes we just think the enemy and we're like, man, I'm not doing X, Y, and Z, but we forget that the Bible says a carnal mind is at enmity with God. When I allow my flesh to govern and dictate what I do, when I do it, the Lord is not in control. And that's not pleasing to the Lord as, as well. And so I just want us to pray and just ask the Lord to help us to resubmit ourselves to him and that there would, we would be baptized with a hunger and an aggression, not towards one another, but for everything that God has for us into the, in the kingdom. In Jesus' name, God, I submit myself to you. God, I pray that you would have your way in every person here. God, I pray that you would awaken us so we would not be asleep. God, there is something that you are and have been doing in the earth. And God, we want to be a part of it. We don't want to miss it. But God, there are some of us that we have allowed our flesh to coerce us. We've allowed, God, the enemy to lie to us. God, we've opened doors that we should not have opened. And God, I pray that you would give us the grace to submit to you a fresh. God, that you would help us, God, to go back to the old ways. God, that we would go back to your word. God, that we would submit to you afresh. God, we don't want to let get give up ground to the enemy, but God, we want everything that you have for us. So God, we submit to you. God, speak to me. Show me, God, anywhere in my spirit and heart in which I've given up ground to the enemy. Show me, God, any area that there's been compromise. God, reveal to me, God, everything, God, that I may have given God, I pray that you would help us to close every open door. God, I pray that you would help us to close. God, every door that you've closed has stone us to close. God, I pray that you would give us the grace to pursue you. God, help us to destroy every stronghold. Help us to destroy every stronghold. God, we submit to you. We submit to you. Shanabasa, yeah, 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 y